Thank you for tuning in to Stampscaping 101. This is a scene that I just stamped out. It's a little, it's slightly out of character with, I'd say, I don't know, 80% of my scenes where I tend to go a lot darker uh, than this one. I wanted to keep the kind of emotional weight of this one lighter. Um, so I didn't take you know, I didn't go for a heavy vignette or anything like that. Heavy staging. This one's more about kind of subtleties to me. And uh, just kind of a more light, airy mood, you know. Maybe the scene could be somewhere up in the higher elevations or something like that. You know, just where, uh, I don't know, the colors can be a little bit different. Sometimes um, just the light seems different to me. Like if I'm up in the Sierras or something like that at, uh, you know, 7,000 feet or, I don't know, higher. But, um, as I say in the end of this video, for me, I was thinking about mainly this water down here and getting this kind of crystalline blue, inviting kind of, uh, aqua, uh, tone color scheme with some subtle... Um, layers of depth underneath this surface, kind of in terms of this texturing going on and down here I have some pebbles. I can almost not see the uh, the um, the cracked earth stamp. Believe it or not, this is in there, but it's subtle because I stamped it out, you know, in a, in a gray, but you can see those cracks down there, which I think add to kind of the visual richness of the scene and when you're working with kind of a, a minimal range of a uh, hue and values sometimes it's nice to have some additional subtle textures working in there just to add variety to the scene and it doesn't always have to be in darker tones or something like that it could be in a kind of a muted range of colors i think it's still rich in terms of um you know the uh, the color scheme but but it is minimal um in terms of you know many different things the intensity and uh the the value range and uh, also the uh and this the intensity the intensity down here it's all right here in the water it's a little bit brighter but for me in the end kind of playing around with uh, this rocky peak up here, just adding in and really obscuring kind of a large portion of it where I could, because I had that light white cloud in the background, I can have some of that cloud kind of pouring over, you know, some of that vapors coming over like that ridge line right there, you know. And uh, for me, that really added a lot of light here and kind of a three-dimensional um, aspect. I think even more so having some of that vapor coming to the uh, the foreground. So for me, that's where a lot of the fun is, and I kind of obscured that side of the uh, mountain. I mean, here's the mountain right here, but you know, I kind of pulled off this ridge line closer to me by adding a little bit of the vapor there, keeping it light, and just kind of toning in the background area right in here with a little bit more tone. So this part right here was fairly dark, but you know, using that pigment ink there really uh, dig the trick. So anyways, but see, I love doing that type of thing or, you know, finding something new, um, a new way to do something. And it's not with a new technique or something like that, but it was just done in a little bit of different application here. So, um, I don't know, for me, the scene is really about that background mountain as opposed to this area down here. Uh, for me, personally, just in terms of a technique and look. So anyways, if you choose to watch this video, I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you like the scene. And, uh, I don't know, this this slightly different tones from the past couple videos um, done. So, um, fun stuff, as always. Thanks for watching. Okay, I have something in mind that I want to try. It's somewhat of a color scheme more than anything. I'm going to stamp some of these images that I've been using in a lot of the stamp-alongs 
just the basic one with the uh, Lakeside Cove large. But I want to use this cracked earth stamp here. This cracked earth stamp can be used for a lot of different things. I've often used it for kind of like a desert surface, you know, with a lot of kind of a craggly, harsh looking, um, I don't know, scenery in it, dead trees and whatnot. But in reality, I mean, this stamp, the idea that I got this from was from a book on um, some wetlands and just kind of your seasonal wetlands. This is kind of a mud flat area, you know, that in the uh, uh, summer and fall tend to dry up a little bit. And, uh, you know, in the spring and winter, it's, you know, has water in there. So anyways, um, what I thought I would do, and I've done this before in a one of the step-by-step -step lessons on the website, but I thought I would do it here uh, in a video. I just felt like doing this stamp mainly, but um, I don't know. Usually when I return to some composition, I do it a little bit differently. Um, even though I did that other one, I don't know, it's probably an well over 10 years ago, but um, I don't know, I just want to try something a little bit different, and uh, what I have in mind is um, kind of a real crystalline blue tone scene, and I'll go quite lightly in the background um, without too many dark tones, like at the top, you know, less vignetting like I usually do to, you know, kind of frame off the composition. I'm probably going to have to fight against my urge to do that, but uh, I don't know. I, I mean, if it needs it, I guess, you know, I'll, I'll do it, but um, um, I'm going to try not to. I want to keep things kind of lighter in this one. Um, real kind of uh, airy and light. Uh, in terms of the uh, I don't know, I guess the, uh, the scene's kind of emotional weight. Um, okay, now what I've done is I've just stamped the whole, uh, colored the whole thing in black with the stamp pad. I think that was black. I need to make sure it wasn't my bottle green, which is a super dark green. But then what I've done down here is I've added a little bit, little bit of this manganese blue, um, to the, uh, some of the reflections in the water. I didn't color most of this area right in here um, because I want it to be fairly light so I just didn't even bother with it down there. And then I've gone in with my green, number four green uh, Marvy pen and just uh, added a few green highlights in here, you know, in that black uh, tree area. So, I mean, if you're looking at a tree in the distance too anyway, Chances are it's not going to look really green. Not like these pine trees at least, but um, you know, they'll be darker, but I can get a little bit of variation within that uh, silhouette. And I, and I think I put some of that green down here again with the uh, in the reflections. Okay, now I'm going to have my Rocky Peak stamp here in the background as well, so let me see if I can leave some room for it. I don't know, maybe I should have gone a little bit bigger, but uh, we'll just use, we'll use the uh, quarter page card here. Okay, and there's not too much variation. I can see a little bit of variation in here. I should have pressed harder here, but that's not really going to matter. Okay. Rocky Peaks. Okay, now let's see what we can do here. I was thinking about... Uh, let's go with black. Alright, I'm going to show you a trick here. I, I've probably done this on other videos, but... I have a bad memory, so... Um, I don't remember doing this, but I'll do it here. I've colored in this mountain, okay? And, okay, let me go for a little bit of variation in here as well. Let me add some, I'll just add some blue tones, maybe, into some of this uh, 
some of these peaks. Whether it shows up as that, I, I'm not really sure, but we'll see if it shows up. Okay, but right here, okay, because I've some of these trees are slightly lighter in value, okay, because I've added the green to it. If that's black, I can just stamp that right over the top and not worry about it. But just for kind of a tweak in your technique, you know, just, I mean, if you've seen these other videos, you've seen where I've kind of mopped off the edge of the cloud or sky objects, you know, so it transitions into the surrounding area and other impressions of itself sometimes. Well, I'm going to do that with this mountain, okay? I'm taking off a good amount on the bottom part, okay? The dry paper towel. And then as I move up this Rocky Peak image, I'm taking off a little bit less than I did on the bottom, so it's transitioning from wet to dry, so it should transition from dark to light, okay? And the reason why we have it lighter down here is because we have this row of trees down here, and we want to keep, you know, somewhat of the a nice silhouette of those trees, and the background can't be too dark, you know, in terms of this imagery, okay? Now, it transitions off in tone on the design itself like this, but we're also going to help it out a little bit by just having kind of this bottom half a little bit lighter. So I don't want it to just go dark and then light, okay? I want it to kind of just transition from darker to lighter like that in a more graceful manner. So I've wiped off a little bit of that. And then as I, if I moved up, I took off less. So it's wet, medium, dry, okay? So let's see how that looks. Hopefully I didn't talk too long. And all that ink dried up on me, but it shouldn't have. Okay, so this is what it looks like right here. Hopefully that's picking it up, but can you see that mountain is darker up there and lighter down here? So in that lighter area that, you know, these trees, I mean, it does get a little bit more obscure, but you can, if you can see it, it's a little bit lighter in tone than the tree itself. So it's not that big of a deal, but when you look back like that, you know, the trees in the foreground stand out a little bit more. I mean, I could have even taken off a little bit more. And then up here, we can see a little trace, hopefully you can, of that hint of blue right in here. I don't know if you can see that. It's a little bit more kind of dark grayish blue here. And uh, again, that's just for a little bit of variation. You can put that in there or not. You know, it's a very subtle thing. It's not that big of a deal, but um, I don't know, I like. Now, I guess we could stamp this again, like down here to represent like a reflection. And you would probably see that mountain down here as a reflection, but um, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave that out because I want to put this in here. And I just think, I don't know, that mountain down here would kind of obscure that a little bit. So, all right, now for this, let's go with, um, let's go with something like a gray. All right, let me just use the Memento London Fog. It's kind of the same as the Marvy. Number 12 gray. I mean, it looks really close to me, you know. Sometimes I think these mementos were, might have been uh, designed around some of the Marvy Basic set, but I don't know. Maybe not. I guess a gray is a gray. This is a neutral gray. It's not a, like a warm gray or cool gray. It's a nice neutral gray, which I like, you know. I, I like the other temperatures of gray too, but um, but if I'm going to have one gray, I'm going to go with a neutral one because I can add warm tones to it to turn it warm and I can add cool to make it cool. But if it's warm gray, you know, it looks kind of funny if you add cool to it, you know. I'm talking about layering tones. Okay, now let's transition this, okay? Things in the foreground are usually a little bit darker than things in the background because we're looking through more atmosphere and whatnot. So, and this is going to be underwater too, okay? So I'm just kind of wiping off this top, okay? And as I move down, 
I'm kind of using less pressure as I wipe, you know, down here. So I'm taking off more up here and it's just a little bit kind of in this area. And I'll leave the foreground as is. Okay. Let's stamp that out. Maybe I'll take off more off the top. I don't know if it'll be any big deal, but those rocks are there. I could mask it off, but I don't think I need to. If some of it shows up in the rock, then who cares? Okay. It's subtle, but remember, this is supposed to read like it's underwater, okay? So I can already tell, I mean, once I add in some blues in here, won't well, that be kind of nice is, like, you know, it it gives the impression, or it makes a statement that the water is clear and we can see below the surface. And that's one of the things that I don't always do. I just kind of make a watery surface with some streaks of blue or something like that. But when you do add those kind of uh, layers of uh, imagery underneath, I think it... I don't know, it just kind of increases the kind of the visual sophistication of a kind of a given statement and uh, in this case it's a, you know, lake. Alright, let's see. We have this area up here and I could just use tone up there if I want to. Or we can add a cloud or something, which might be kind of nice, you know. And, the cloud cumulus would be a good cloud up there. It's really billowy and it's really soft. And it might provide a nice contrast against something that's kind of hard and craggly, you know, down below. Let's go ahead and do that. This is using just a light blue. And let's do that thing where I kind of wipe off the perimeter and I'll wipe off the bottom. You know, we're talking about transitions. All right, now I think we might have to do a little bit of masking because I don't want, well, I'll probably add some blue into that background mountain, but maybe I don't want too much of that cloud texture in there. I'll get a little bit, but I don't want the whole thing, you know, because I am kind of snapping deep into the mountain, you know, or having this cloud kind of come up from behind the mountain, right? So, if, I mean, if you look close, you know, there's going to be, you can see where that cloud is clearly stamped into that mountain right there, but, you know, that's what it looks like. It's not really going to be a big deal. That's, again, that's why I just really don't do a lot of uh, careful masking. Um, because it's just simply not needed. Um, we want we want overlapping imagery for the most part. It just it just makes everything just the continuity between uh, imagery just so much more. I don't know. Integrated. Okay, here we go. Right here and. That one, first one came about right this one. The next one, I'll change the angle slightly and I'm overlapping into it, okay? And when I say overlapping, I'm talking about maybe a quarter inch to a half inch. So it's not like you, you know, there's a careful, careful overlap or anything like that, no. It's just kind of bringing it together in general, like so. And, I don't know, there's a little space in there. You know, I plan to fill it in with color anyways, but if you could just take the stamp again, ink it up, and then stamp another part in there just to fill in if you wanted to. I don't think it's needed. Okay, so anyways, the, we have our foundation for um, the scene. Um, just in general, I'm looking at this um, as far as colors go and uh, layering of tone. I'll bring it, those clouds out a little bit brighter, or lighter, but putting a little bit of tone around it, 
like I said, I'm not I'm not planning on going too dark on this one. I'll bring some blues in here. I can see this mountain's kind of light down here. I'll have some of the light hitting probably the peak and this ridge line up here. I'll put some extra tones in here. So it looks like the light is coming down, you know, top of that background peak, this foreground peak. We'll have some of these rocks a little bit shaded, okay? But I, if this isn't a mystery, you see, because that mountain all, is already dark in here in some areas, so I'm going to add some dark, you know, extra tone to the area that's already dark. In these rocks, you can see this little, you know, um, water line where it's darker, right? Where the rocks meet the water, I'll make that darker. And I'll leave some of the tops of these rocks lighter because that's, you know, what it already looks like in the image. So I'm just going to be kind of fleshing in those areas a little bit more. And then down here in the water, I'll just, you know, add some nice modeling of the surface, um, adding some nice streaky tones maybe. And uh, we'll see where it goes from there. Okay, now, um, let's see here. I kind of forgot to uh, clean off my stylus tools. So, stylus tools, if you don't know, these things just kind of pop out like that. I'm not throwing this away, this one just needs to be um, washed. And you just pop in the new ones like so. Okay, and it's ready to go. These aren't brand new, these just have been washed. Okay, so let's look at this again. This is a gray memento. It's the same gray that I used on the cracked earth. I think. I've been doing so much talking, I, I don't remember. I think it was the gray that I used on that. Okay. But if it's not, no big deal again. Okay, kind of establishing, reiterating, toning. My Lakeside Cove large stamp impression is slightly wet still, okay. So I'm being careful not to smear that too much. I don't know, I'm not really being too careful. It's smearing, but I, I, I guess I'm not really concerned with that. Okay. See that? You kind of oscillate it. Give yourself, you know, a little bit of tone here and there. Don't. You could just color it all in, but I think this looks kind of nicer to have you know, that variation in here, and leaving some of the, you know, just the bare page, the white of the page in there. Now that's not, you know, that specific area of lightness is not pre-planned or anything like that. I, that's just the way it came out. I'm just retaining some of it and leaving the, the other, you know. There's not some kind of grand scheme, you know. There's no grand scheme in terms of specifics. It's just about, you know, just about variation. Okay, so adding some of this in like so. See that, you know, that mountain on the background, just one tone, it's already kind of, you know, there's this oscillation between light and shade. So I think that's giving character to that mountain already. It looks more three-dimensional to me, just with one tone put on there, but just retaining some of the areas just as is. Now there's no, you know, right or wrong on that. You know, who knows where, you you know, you're just saying that that's where, you know, there's some cloud up here or something like that, and it's blocking off some of that, um, some of that light on, you know, within a given um, object or space or whatever. Okay, and 
why not use some of this in the sky too? I don't have to, but let's do that. All right, now my favorite, I'm gonna use, I haven't been using it. It doesn't come in pad form, so I tend to not use it too often, but, and this pen's a little bit dry too, but we'll see if I can, what I can get out of it. This is a manganese blue, number 36 from Marvy. It comes in bread, the brush marker form still, but, um, and it doesn't come in a reinker or anything like that. But this is, this is my favorite blue. It's real, it's light, but it's real bright and crystalline. Um, I don't know, I should buy more of these pens. Uh, probably, I'm guessing Marvy on their website probably has it, but I'm not sure. I'm gonna add this down here into the water and a little bit to the sky, okay? And I'll add it in roughly the same areas that I do with the gray, okay? Now, like I said, this pen is really dry, so it's not applying a large saturation of it, but... It'll have to do. I can kind of reinvigorate it a little bit. Maybe I should add some water to the uh, inside of the pen a little bit. You know, it, the ink is stored, and you can do that with Marvy. You can just open up the back of it and add a little water or... I don't know, you can even add some other brand of reinker, perhaps. Okay. I mean, this doesn't look real bright at all. It's it's not really the true character of it, especially when it's wet. But I think it's still nice and bright um, in terms of a tone when it's brand new. Well, it doesn't have to be brand new. It just can't be like dry like mine is. But let's get a little bit more of that going. And I'll add it to the sky. We'll have some of that, some of the peaks reflecting a little bit of that color. Maybe some of these rocks as well can have a little bit of that blue on it. Okay. And like I said, I'm going to leave my top area there a little bit lighter. Okay, so let's see. All right, now I want to bring a slight warmth into the scene. Um, and that's by warming up the, the water a little bit. You know, maybe making it more of a, like an aqua blue. And what that would mean is that um, we need to bring in a little bit more um, greens to it, a warmer temperature, okay? Um, but actually, before that, let's... Let me... That manganese blue is so dry. Let me let me just add in some more blues. I'll go with the Marvy number sixty salvia blue. Actually, that the salvia just because it's not so dry, it looks even brighter than that manganese. But that manganese is really nice when it's uh, when it's uh, I don't know looking like it should look. All right. Mm. We need something brighter in here, don't we? It's looking too uniformly um, intense, meaning not very intense at all. So... Let's try for a brighter blue. Let's try the Bahama blue. So 
Sometimes the most intense colors in terms of uh, vibrancy are found in the shadows because they're not kind of being, you know, washed out by uh, sunlight, you know, really bright sunlight. Really bright sunlight might make something lighter, but it doesn't make things brighter, okay? Lighter is just the relative, you know, light and darkness of something, and brightness is the relative uh, intensity of color. So sometimes like an you know, like a overcast day or something like that, colors are just so much brighter, you know, because they're not being washed out by all that sunlight. Okay, this is what I'm going after. I'm going after a little bit of it. See these brighter blues in here? That's what I wanted. I wanted... I wanted that water to really come alive, you know, and to be really, really inviting looking. Really inviting looking, like, uh, like you just feel like going in there and, uh, you know, taking a dip. In a scene like this, that rod would probably be freezing cold because it's probably ice melt, but in theory, uh, you'd kind of want to go for a swim in there. Okay, so getting a little bit brighter. Okay. It still doesn't look terribly inviting to me, but let's try this pale green. Um it's it's not too warm of a green though, it's kind of more blue green and, and also it's not very um, light, so it's kind of, you know, it's, it's like a pastel green. All right, let me put it in one area, but can you see it right in here? Okay, that's just on one side. We'll do that. We'll do more of that in here. I don't know, it's kind of introducing another green in here too. Kind of like, you know, that we find in the trees. Okay, why don't we put a little bit in these rocks too. There's some grass along the rocky shoreline. But it can also just be a little bit of moss maybe. I don't know if moss would be, really be found on these rocks, but who cares? We're just making a kind of a visual statement of something that, uh, you know, it's our creation. And I think a little bit of warmth on those rocks wouldn't hurt. Okay, so. A little bit more green. kind of warming up the scene a little bit, and especially that area. I'm just kind of contemplating, I'm looking at these mountains right here and I'm wondering if I should add something to it, you know, to just kind of flesh it in slightly, and I'm kind of, I don't know, I don't know if it's an instinct or it's just like something that I'm wondering about, but I'm thinking about going with like a, like a just, I don't know, I went, I don't know if you would see that from a distance, but um, maybe a little bit of a, a warm temperature up there. We need like a, like a really pale beige, maybe. Let me try this desert sand one. 
Something like a peach bellini would look good too. That's the uh, color uh, ranger uh, Adirondack light color. Let's try that. Let's add a little bit of warmth into that background mountain. Now this desert sand is a, it's a pretty light, um, light value. I don't know, it looks okay. It just, it's really subtle right here. But I think that looks better. We'll try it on those rocks here too, I think. Let's just warm those, some of these rocks up slightly. Yeah. That looks good. This is subtle, you know. I mean, if you can barely see it on your whatever device you're using, but see these rocks warmed up just slightly. Okay. Um, let's go for a little bit of additional texture. I took that off. This is my tiny rock stamp. Sometimes I've wondered if this is my favorite stamp that came out of uh, the release that this one was. Uh, this one came out in. I just I really like all this this little texture that it. Um, adds to scenes. It's getting a little bit, there's variation down here, but there's a little bit of monotony to it to me. So, um, I'm gonna try some of this. It, hopefully it just kind of reads as some rocks below the surface. Kind of, kind of stamping a little bit wet into wet here, but that's fine. These are kind of meant to be a little bit more subtle. Okay, so we have that. All right, now that's going to dry, and it's going to be lighter when it dries. I think. We'll see. All right. I always put reeds or something like that in the fork, and I'm, I'm going to use this um, rocks and leaves stamp, and maybe I can get a little bit of variation in that as well. I'm not sure. I'll keep it fairly dark, though. So dark, that's black, and on these leaves right here, Let's add a little bit of variation using that. Some green. Okay. Okay. And hopefully, with foreground imagery. It puts the viewer on kind of solid ground looking into the scene. And it provides kind of that extra feel of view in terms of depth within the scene, scenic depth. And it will provide contrast between having something very dark next to something lighter um, behind it. Now that page down there is kind of wet again, so I don't want to stamp wet into wet. I'm kind of holding this down a little bit longer where the ink transfers, hopefully, and isn't like a vacuum where I stamp it and I like, pull it off and it kind of, you know, the ink comes off with it in terms of uh, not transferring to the paper. Not pulling off ink that I've already stamped. That's not going to happen. Okay, so that's good. There's a little bit more green in there than I thought it would be. I didn't think I pulled off... I didn't think I pulled off so much black, so see that right there? And since this is really an, not 
unbalanced, I'll go for another impression of it. Okay, black. Little highlights of uh, green, hopefully. And it's, I'm just kind of using this portion of the uh, stamp. Something like that. Okay. Actually, I don't like that little space there. using just the top of it. Just getting some extra leaves in there. Actually, that gives me an idea. This one right here I just stamped, you know, that one in black. Let me do it again over here. That's a little bit too green for me. So I'm not trying to obscure that one. I'm just going to, you know, add some depth with an additional layer of black leaves, kind of lower and in front of that row of green leaves. So we have a little bit of depth within that foreground. Something like that. All right. Okay. Let's see what we have here. some of my barrel Prismacolor pencils out. And I was doing a little experiment earlier, seeing if this would even show up on glossy cardstock, and it did, so... I wonder if I can get a little bit of tone in here. Usually something like a colored pencil isn't going to show up on... A, it isn't going to transfer onto glossy cardstock. Um, just because it's so thick, usually with a soft media like this, you have to have a paper that has a little bit of tooth to it, meaning texture. So let me see, you might be able to get a little bit of a, kind of a hint of some of that color on there. It depends how soft your uh, colored pencils are, too. That's a little bit of pink up there, it's just a little touch of it. I don't know, it's very, very subtle. I mean, we can do that with inks, too, but this is kind of a little bit more specific. I don't know. I, I don't know if I will. I don't feel like scrubbing, scrubbing, scrubbing that right now. But that added a little bit more tone. Um, let's do some things here. I almost forgot. Um, let's try a little bit of some shadow embellishments using some of the alcohol pens. I'm not going to add too much, but okay, just in some of these rocks, just adding a little bit more shadow to them, kind of in where the shadows already exist. And again, this is a very light gray, okay? I feel like a surgeon. I, this, this piece of paper is so close to the camera, I can, I'm almost just, I'm looking at the, the screen on the back of the camera doing, trying to do this. So 
this rock right here, if I darken the side of it a little bit, it'll make this one kind of stand out a little bit more by making the area behind it a little bit darker, okay? Maybe I need to go to a darker pen, but you can see that this one kind of stands out now like that, see that? Then when you hold it out like that, you know what I mean? It has that nice, I don't know, that nice uh, contrast, I guess. Like, same thing with this rock right here. Let's say there's a little bit of light shining on that rock right there, right? So all you need to do is just, um, if you take a little bit of extra tone and add that behind it, maybe it makes that little rock there stand out a little bit more. Let me, let me switch up here. Let me go with the... Oh, let me try this blue here. Okay. Okay, let's see. Let's add a little bit. So if we can get that stand out a little bit more. Okay, I'm probably not going dark enough. It stands out a little bit. I've darkened in this whole rock back, back here, so. Put a little bit of tone on that one. Okay, so there's a little bit more variation in the rocks, okay, like in really specific areas, hit the uh, shore, yeah, shoreline, right where the rocks meet, water, okay, you can even put it up some of the mountains here. The shadows, perhaps. And again, th this is an alcohol pen, if I didn't mention that. And it's a very subtle shade, very light shade of uh, blue. This one happens to be called Aquamarine. And it's by Marvy LaPlume. All right, so a little bit of extra toning to the uh, mountain. I should do this composition with some crazy colors and see what it comes out like. Okay, that is that. Now, we have a kind of an open landscape here. I think it needs something in the foreground, maybe. I thought I had my little kayaker here. Something like that. It'd be going that way, though. I don't know if I want to. I might want to just... Actually, I might want to just leave it as is. Just like a pure, you know, serene landscape. Um... Hmm... Let's do something here. Let's, let's make this more interesting. See how these clouds are here? And I've retained some of the lightness of the, uh, the cloud as it meets the mountain. You ever, you ever see kind of some clouds kind of coming over the top of a mountain or something like that, or around anything, and it's kind of pouring over it? Let's, let's try something like that, some kind of effect such as that. And let's do it with some pigment ink. I'll just grab a cotton swab, okay? up. Okay. I'm dabbing that into that. And let's take off a lot of that. 
you know, get evenly dispersed on the cotton swab. I don't want blobs of ink being uh, applied. I want a really subtle application of uh, this um, pigment ink. Okay, let me try to bring this down a little bit more. Okay, cranking down. Now this is where I always get in trouble because I forget to, I start working with the scene out here and I, I kind of forget about that, so I'll try to remember. Okay, so bringing in some of this tone. It's translucent, right? You know, the colors underneath are showing through. And that's because I'm doing this in a very, very, you know, kind of dry brushed application, okay? So let's have that whole cloud kind of coming over the, at, uh, that little dip in the mountain. See, that's kind of glowing now, and so it kind of puts that cloud kind of in front of it a little bit, you know, or at least some of the vapor, like so. We can have a little bit of it peeking through over here, too. Yeah, kind of on that lower you know, on the lower slope. We'll have some of that cloud kind of oozing over. It looks like a, I don't know, like a, like a milkshake or something like that, you know, in terms of the consistency where it kind of comes over that top, like so. And let's see, let's kind of lighten up some of these other clouds and give it some I don't know, visual lightness in terms of like visual weight. It's kind of putting a little bit of vapor on some of these clouds up here. And that's what's good about retaining some of the white of the paper. Okay. Just like we can add on some white translucent um, touches with this. Okay, so this is what it looks like so far, okay. Maybe I'll have some creeping in from over here too. Okay. See that, it's saying that at that elevation it's, you know, the clouds are kind of coming in front of it. So, right around here on the opposite side of the mountain, you know, maybe it, it's true that the, you know, that cloud's kind of coming in around the same elevation as well. I, I believe it, I don't know, don't you, I think it gives kind of a more three-dimensional illusion, I guess, having something like that, you know, it really changed. I mean, this mountain right now, we're getting a lot of variation in it just from that one impression. Um, which, which I like. It doesn't look so flat, you know. Okay, now, that's that. I think that mountain looks better now. It's more, I don't know. Uh, the scene suddenly, for me, became about that this area up here, my eye goes right to that instead of down here, which is fine. Maybe instead of calling the scene something lake, you call it something peak, you know. Um, searching my brain for a title for this, but nothing is coming to mind. Ah, adding a little bit more over here is kind of fun. And again, this is very, very dry, okay? It's a real dry brush technique here dry swab technique. You don't want a lot of ink on here. You want to have it where 
it takes a few taps really before you can see anything happening. When that happens, it means you have control over your tap, okay? That's the thing that's the hardest to, to, to learn is, you know, you got to get this consistency just right. Well, it's not just right, but just don't have it too wet is all, okay? That's the only bad part. It can be too dry where you have to really tap on it, you know? But just don't make it too wet. And if you apply too much, you know, um, just rub it right off, you know? Take a napkin or a paper towel and it'll rub right off, you know, for you. You don't need to worry about it being a permanent uh, thing. And that's using the color box one. If you use like a brilliance, um, those things dry really fast. All right, that is fun stuff. Oh, let's see. I'll add a little bit of a cloud behind some of these trees, maybe. A little bit of fog or mist. Okay, so that's what that looks like. I add a little bit down there just so it's not all up there. You can add some down in your water. Put a little bit of kind of mist on the lake. Kind of this is all about having kind of a, a universal texture um, throughout the scene just to create a little bit of continuity. What I'm doing with my fingers, I'm kind of removing some of the ink. So I'm adding, removing. Okay, let's throw some of that, uh, some of these leaves down here in a little bit of light. Where there's light um, as a background, I'm going to add a little bit of light to some of these um, leaves, creating a little bit more variation in the foreground. Oscillate it. Don't do it over all of them. This area down here looks like, you know, there's a little bit of dimension to the water, I think. I'm starting to wonder if I can use a little bit of a really subtle water texture on top of that. I'm getting very tempted to, to do that. Um, but I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, okay, this is a white gel pen. It's a little bit of a surface texture in here.
these dots in here. It's just a little bit of texture right in here. Okay. And how about on tops of some of these rocks, just putting a little hint of some additional light on them. It's just like some of these rocks maybe like have two dots on them or something like that. So they're a little bit more illuminated or top lit. I wouldn't say really illuminated, but just high, you know, a couple of highlights. It's a little ridge line right there or up here, right here. Let's try a little bit of just a subtle hint of some extra light being reflected off of it created by the you know a couple white gel pen dots okay let me see if I can pick that up here all right I put a couple right right here and maybe in here and right back in here All right so that's what it looks like really up close you can see those highlights down here but again this is like you know viewing something really super close up in reality you're going to be looking at it like something like this you know but anyway um very subtle <laughs> and this the gel pen really doesn't stand out very much at all um, when you have a scene that's as light as this, okay? I didn't go too dark like it said I was going to do. It just wouldn't be appropriate in this scene, I, I don't think, you know, having it too dark up here. And this is kind of nice for me. I, I should leave things kind of lighter like this because it afforded me the uh, ability to go in here and add so much of that lightness and obscure some of these things. I really like that. I think that might be one of my favorite... Um, Rocky Peak uh, impressions that I've done so far. Uh, just, I really like the variation in here. That really likes, looks to me like, you know, there's like three-dimensional space um, in that area, just from really taking that pigment ink and kind of obscuring that top portion of it, right in that, you know, little saddle in here. Okay, so I thought this scene was going to be about this down here in kind of a warm, inviting water area. Maybe this is at the tail end of a hike or something like that, or a place that you're backpacked into. You want to take a little dip in here, but um, for me, for this scene, I, I learned... I've done that before up there by adding some tone, but um, I don't know, for me, that was my... Um, that scene is about that mountain for me, just in terms of what I learned on this one. I don't know, I, I think I just, I don't know, just hitting it in some kind of more specific areas and pulling out this front ridge line, you know, even more so than, uh, than it is in the design itself. Um, was kind of nice. I, I haven't pulled those two areas of, of the, uh, the mountain apart like that quite so much before, so. Huh. See, that's the thing with these videos, you know, you do one thing to kind of reveal some other technique or something like that, but, you know, the more I do of these things, it's like the more, I don't know, scenes I feel like kind of exploring and stamping and techniques, you know, so you do one scene to answer, you know, or to reveal a couple other little different techniques or approaches to something, but I don't know. It's like two more pop up, you know, during the process that I, I want to kind of look at. But anyways, it's not a really a frustrating thing. That's kind of where all the fun is too. But um, anyway, uh, I'll have to 
figure something out and really uh, do something with some more mountains or something like that, or just that ability to uh, kind of break apart a, an image and, uh, you know, to, to do a kind of a push-pull thing in terms of depth going on in it. Um, I don't know, I'm going to have to look at some other stamps and see what we can do uh, that with in terms of for me, that's, I don't know, it's, it looks extreme in terms of uh, that uh, one little area up there in terms of uh, depth. But anyway, okay, rambling around, rambling on and on and on. Um, a fun scene, somewhat minimal in terms of your color schemes. You know, this is kind of like the opposite of um, some of those more kind of vibrant, super vibrant, um, I don't know, kind of crazier lighting uh, color schemes in terms of uh, uh, your kind of a more, I don't know, less normal, I guess you can say, color schemes, like that magenta one in the past. This one I'd say is more traditional in terms of uh, a lot of the uh, people's associations with um, landscapes and uh, thinking of scenes you know, sticking around to the blues. There's a little bit of brown in there in terms of, um, you know, bringing some of that warmth up into that uh, mountain. Keeping it with the, the greens and blues and the uh, impressions for trees and bushes. And uh, just kind of approaching water as just kind of a body of, uh, you know, blue. In this case, we used a little bit of green to add a little bit of warmth to it, which I think helped. It's a little bit more inviting, you know, when you see something like that um, in terms of a temperature. And uh, instead of just going with all blue and gray, it looked a little too, bit too stark for me. So that's where that kind of temperature um, and hue change come into play. In theory, you know, the more different types of hue, intensities, values that you use in the scene. Potentially you can uh, kind of expand on the visual range and potential interest of a scene, but sometimes, you know, just going for a, a certain emotional statement you can kind of stick to kind of more, in this case it's it's a little bit more muted tones. We didn't go too intense with it, you know, but I think it has its own feel. Maybe it's more, I don't know, maybe the color scheme is slightly more delicate or something like that, you know. Maybe tranquil would be the uh, word, you know, in terms of uh, kind of creating uh, a lighter or lighter visual harmony. But um, anyways, fun stuff nonetheless. And uh, thanks for watching and uh, hope you enjoyed it.